have just been in a season well actually I just got into a season of rest and it's so hard like can I be honest with you it is so hard waiting then resting then just not knowing what's going on and um often in times like this I forget about um my favorite bible verse or the bible verse that I feel like is best for my life which is proverbs 3 verses 5 through 10 i've been saying this it's a very um popular one it starts with trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding and that's been hard for me in this season i feel like my level of belief and um just faith has been wavering all over the place one second i'm like you know what I trust you, God. This is in your hands. And then the next second, I'm like, I I don't know if I can keep going. And I hate that I, you know, am lukewarm and in the sense that I'm just not really picking a side. I'm just kind of one day I'm happy and I'm ready to wait. And the next day, I'm just like, I've been waiting forever. And as the weather changes and, you know, as fall, because I'm I live up north, so winter comes close faster and fall doesn't really last long and fall is my favorite season but as the weather gets colder and everything I'm just like I cannot deal with seasonal depression right now God I need you to come through for me and today when I was kind of venting to God about how I felt he kind of checked me and he was like you know the way you're speaking about me and the way that you're the way that you're making things out to be you're making me out to be a liar you know you're making me out to be a god that shows favoritism and in matthew and in luke god talks about how there's no favoritism with him and he doesn't favor one person over another but he does things in the fullness of time and so he kind of it wasn't like it didn't really sound like he was yelling at me it was just more like he was like you know what like I'm, I'm being patient with you, but I need to let you know this because you can't keep thinking these thoughts about me. And he was basically telling me like, you know, you don't think of me like a father. You think of me, you know, like someone who's harsh, you know, and I was telling God, I'm like, I feel like, you know, you want to help. You want to bless everybody else and you want to give everybody else good things, but you don't want to give me that. And he kind of just stopped me in that and said, you know, why would I give everybody else something and you don't get something? Why would people who are being more disobedient than you in this season get things before you get things in this season because I like them more than you? There's no such thing as that. And God has told me multiple times throughout this week and everything he's been telling me, like, you know, I'm so proud of you. Um, thank you for being obedient. Thank you for, you know, being patient. Like he's been telling me stuff like that. And so he said, you know, I'm in my mind, I'm making him out to be a liar and that's not fair. You know, he ended off the conversation with telling me, seek me more than you seek these things. Seek me more than you seek all these things that you're venting to me about all these things that you want so badly from me i'm the provider i'm the only one that can give you exactly what you're looking for so seek me first and he didn't he didn't say anything after that he didn't say and all these things will be added onto you he just said seek me the provider of all these things that you want seek me before you seek these things and so it wasn't really like a conviction but it was more just like a very needed correction um that you know i've I've kind of been treating God like he's, you know, not a God of his word and that he's, you know, playing around with me and he's not doing that. And he does things in the fullness of time. And I feel bad because God can't reveal to us everything he's doing because as humans, well, I know for me, naturally, my first instinct is to self-sabotage, is to ruin something before it even gets good, right? Because we all have different fears and I kind of fear success. And so God knows that about me. He knows me better than I know myself. So if he's holding something from me or if he's not allowing me to achieve something or not giving me something right away, God said, you know, it, it, it's bad and it, it hurts that you think that the reason why I'm not giving this thing to you is because I'm not good. 
I created everything and I said it was good. I knit you in your mother's womb and I said you were good. I gave you this house and gave you everything you have and I said it was good. I blessed you with your mind and everything that you think and I've blessed you with a spirit to want to draw closer to me and I said it was good. But because you're not getting something right when you want it, you're making me out to be a liar. You're making me out to not be a good father, you know? And I don't recommend testing God like that. I don't recommend um, giving God an ultimatum and saying, you know, if you don't do this by this time, I'm going back to the world. Like, I don't um, recommend doing that. It's very unfair. And God says, you know, I know you better than you know yourself. And that's why that verse comes up trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding because to my understanding he just doesn't want to give me something that i need and and to god's understanding it's if you needed it you would have it if you needed it i i wouldn't hold it from you i want to give you every desire of your heart but this world is twisted the devil constantly has an agenda over your life and you can get in your own way that's why god needs to divide your blessings and give it to you in due time at the right time in the fullness of time so that you don't wreck that which was supposed to be a good thing and so I kind of just want to say sorry to God, you know, like for even making you out to be like that. And but God is still merciful. He's still forgiving. He's still faithful. And so he's still saying to me, even in this moment, like, I understand your frustration. I understand why you feel this way. I understand where this is coming from. Like, I understand why you feel the way you do. Don't think I'm just mad at you. I understand how hard it is waiting, you know. But he's saying you have to read my word and study to show yourself approved because if you're not doing that, then you're always going to, in your mind, make me out to be a liar, you know, and he can't bless a tongue that curses him. So just be very mindful of that. I know that in our frustrations and in our weariness, we can start to get um, irritable with God and feel like God is turning back on what he said. But I was reading Romans today and it was Romans 4 verses 20 through 21. And it was talking about how Abraham, I'll probably put it on the screen, but it was talking about how Abraham um, trusted God when God said that he would be a father of many nations because not only did he trust that God was telling him the truth and that was that not only did he trust that that promise that God gave him actually belonged to him he also trusted that God was able to do what he said he was going to do so a lot of the times in our frustration it's also coming from a place of a lack of belief maybe when you were younger you were made a promise and that person didn't keep that promise but God is not them 